Hey everyone, Pete Kalamein here. I hope you're having an awesome day. So in today's video, I want to share with you some basics on high-speed PCB design. Uh, it is often seen as something difficult, something daunting if you don't know the basics. Uh, so I want to tackle the bare, simple basic so that you understand the principles behind high-speed PCB design. So my hope is at the end of the video, the principles, the basics are clear to you that you can get started on doing your first high-speed PCB design. Let's dive into it. So let's start with the basics. We are speaking about high-speed PCB design. In that case, you might think about HDMI transmission, data transmission, USB 3.0, Ethernet. There's always digital signals at a very high speed that you want to have transmitted and there is some receiver side. Now it is very similar to analog RF that you would do where you want to transfer as much power from the input towards the output. But the difference is with high-speed PCB design, with digital signals, you have very steep rising and falling edges on your digital signal. Now, if you go over transmission channel, what you typically will see is that if this is your input, your output will start look something like this. So if let's say we have, we are tracing this signal over here. So we start with a high signal going down over a relatively small, it's five picoseconds fall time. Well, what you will see in reality is over that transmission channel, that signal will fall, but that fall time here is increased to 30 picoseconds. So the question is, in your digital system, will this still be sufficient to have your data rate, your data be interpreted in the correct way? Maybe your system is sampling uh, the one uh, on this point or the zero on this point, and you have a one rather than a zero and vice versa. So the, the idea behind high-speed PCB design is to get these steep rising and falling edges through as decently as possible. Now, and it is again a story about uh, high speed or a story about transmission lines. So there's input power, there is a signal, um, you have a characteristic impedance of your transmission line and there is a load. And it's again a question about designing these transmission lines to push as much of the input power between brackets towards the output load. Now, first question is what frequencies are you designing for? And it's not really depending on the frequency of your signal. Um, so over here you might be, let's say, clocked at 200 megahertz, but the frequency you need to take in mind when designing, so what is called the maximum signal frequency, is 0 0.5 divided by the signal rise or fall time. So that is really the frequency that you are designing for. That's a very important one to keep in mind. So let's think about these transmission lines again. I have shown this in another video where the idea was RF. We were talking about antennas, antenna matching, impedance matching. Same thing holds true here again in high speed design. Um, so you have a signal. This could be your HDMI signal, for instance, and it's routed over a ground plane. And this is what we call a so-called micro strip line. So the idea is that uh, a lot of the, the signal that is flowing here, the return path will be very close um, to the signal. So you want to have a decent ground plane always as close as possible to your high, high speed signal. Again, same story as we had before. So basically where it all starts with, so this is a high speed design we will look into the more detail in a couple of minutes, but it all starts with your board stack up. You need to get that right. So where do I start? I always try to have uh, the complete board stack up from my supplier. So this is a supplier that you could use. There's of course a lot of suppliers. Uh, I have used a template from them. That means that this is already set up to be 100% correct. The thicknesses of the dielectrica between uh, are correct. Uh, the dielectric constant is correct. So we can use this as a start. What you will see is I always have a signal layer over here. And then over here, I will typically use a plane. So this, we, this is saying signal, it will be a full layer uh, of ground. Same thing over here on the bottom, I will be routing my signal. And then I have my ground layer closely next to that one. So the first thing here is to make sure that we have a decent stack up. So let's imagine um, we are designing for 50 ohms. We want to have a signal trace um, going with a 50 ohm transmission line. Most important thing is of course, that is again this story. You want to get as much of your energy from your input towards the output. These two should be matched. So typically you are designing for a certain receiver. Uh, in this case, our receiver will have a certain impedance as well that is expecting. Uh, so you want to design this transmission line between your transmitter and your receiver to be exactly as it should be. 
So based on that layer stack manager, I have also tackled that in another video, but I'll quickly show you. We can make an impedance file, uh, sorry, an impedance profile. So we'll use the signal layer. What you see here, uh, I'm using Altium to do this, is you have your signal trays over here and then the ground underneath. So the signal is my top layer, the ground is underneath. What I'm designing for is a 50 ohm impedance, tolerance of 10%, maybe a bit on the high side, uh, I leave it up to you. So I'll call that my 50 ohm profile. And what I see immediately over here is for this specification, so the thickness over here in between these two layers, the signal on the ground is 0 0.36 millimeters. Well, in that case, the width uh, that I need for my uh, signal, that should be 0 0.62. What you would see, uh, and that's the interesting thing, if you can go to a smaller height of that dielectricum, Let's quickly change that over here. What you now see is that the width has dropped down from 0 0.6 to 0 0.26. So if you're making a high speed design, but also a very high density board, it might be interesting to resort to some kind of a board stack up where the thickness in between these layers is smaller than what I had here before. In that case, the width of the traces can be smaller. And of course you get more density in your boards. So very important stuff to think about. Um, if you're making controlled impedance lines. That is true for single lines, but that is also true for differential lines. So let's say, for instance, you're designing USB 3, a differential signal, um, so that would be around 90 ohms that we want to design. What you will now see is that Aldium has shifted this transmission line um, representation. So there's two signals over here, there's a certain gap in between we're still at the 0 0.16 uh, in thickness. And what you see is automatically we have a calculated width. So we need traces of 0 0.21 in width next to each other. So the differential trace over here, for instance, let's say that this one should be matched at 90 ohms. Well, we know exactly with this board stack, let me go back here, the distance in that differential pair between the two, that is the trace gap, it's fixed at five mil in this case. That will be based on, of course, the, the minimum clearance that your supplier can go. Uh, and then the width of these traces, both should be 0 0.21 to make sure that you have a nice and decent 90 ohm differential matching in there. Now, another important thing to keep in mind is if you have traces close to each other, these are high speed traces. You don't want to have one interfering with another. Typical rule of thumb, and that's an interesting one, is to space them at least three times the height of the dielectricum in between. So that would mean, if again we are looking at these layers over here, the thickness is 0 0.16. Three times that thickness is needed, uh, so it will be a bit less than 0 0.6 uh, between these traces. Of course, of course, if you are able to allow for more distance, that's even better, of course. Uh, so. The main idea here is to place them as far away as possible, as feasible uh, in your design. So that's it. First thing is to get your transmission lines right. So make sure that you're working with the correct board stack up. Make some impedance profiles for single uh, transmission lines, for differential transmission lines. And this is already half of the key to success in high speed PCB design. It's really this idea behind transmission lines, being able to have this perfect matching or the best possible matching on these signals. Now, there are other important things to keep in mind, of course, in high speed design. Um, if we are looking at a couple of these, these are DDR3 um, connections, we want to have inside of the differential pair, so this is one differential pair, inside of this, this pair, you want the length of the traces to be matches. So you don't want any mismatch between your positive and your negative signal so that they nicely come uh, at the same time towards your uh, receiver end, let's say. That's one thing. So that's inter-pair matching, I would say. But there's also intra-pair matching. So what you need is that there is, for instance, in DDR4, in this case, there's a couple of differential buses. Well, there's a lot of them. Um, you want all these buses, if there's clock lines, couple of data lines, you want all of them to be... Uh, at the same length, you want the data and the clock to arrive at the exact same moment. So for that, rather than inside of the differential pair doing length matching, between differential pairs, you need length matching as well. So very important to keep that in mind. So with this matching inside, length matching inside your pair, 
but also length matching within the pairs. I will show that in the next video uh, to give you a bit of an idea how you can quickly do that with Altium. And maybe a last thing, um, if you're doing high speed routing, the main idea is always to avoid vias. So ideally you start at your processor, you go all the way to your connector and that's it without having unnecessary vias. If for some reason you cannot go around it and you need to place a via, then try to make them as small as possible. So you want to reduce the parasitic inductance in there as much as possible. So I hope this was interesting for you. Again, this was a very quick breeze through high speed design. It's just the basics. Of course, there is much more to it, but these are the basics. If you understand this, I think you are already half of the way to, towards successful high speed PCB design. Think about transmission lines, getting power from the input to the output, layer stack up, length matching. These are really the basic things to think about in high speed PCB design. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you got some value out of it. If you like it, feel free to give the video a thumbs up. If you like uh, the videos that I'm making, of course you can always subscribe to this channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below or join the community that is community.sentineo.com. It's free, so I'm happy to welcome you over there. Have a very nice day, bye bye.